Some would say that 3DS is having a slow year in 2018, and that's just something I've always laughed at. And when it comes to Detective Pikachu, which is probably the best 3DS game to release so far this year, I really have to come out and say that I really want to, uh, at this point, come out and say that yes, at the moment, this is probably my favorite new game of 2018. Uh, everything else, <laughs> lots of stuff I am. Um, I, I've been playing on other consoles, has been, you know, is older stuff. This is the new game on the Nintendo platforms that I think is the best release so far this year. My game of the year so far. Uh, I actually haven't gotten that far in it, but going by what I've seen, I'm very, very, very impressed. This is the most fleshed out, unique Pokemon spinoff. Well, fleshed out. I, this is the most... More, this is the best Pokemon spinoff game, I think, since, like, the Mystery Dungeon games, okay? They put a lot of time and effort into this. Like, the story, the animations, the characters. Like, there is all this stuff that makes me think that, like, yeah, they put a lot of effort into, like, making this appeal to, like, older fans uh, and just people who have been with Pokemon set from the very beginning. It, it's amazing just seeing all these... Uh, unique situations all these different Pokemon are getting into and how like a, it's very much an adventure style game. It's not like um, Ace Attorney. Well, it's sort of like if Ace Attorney had a uh, had a more fleshed out investigation phase is how I would like explain the general gameplay of this is that you go around, go around areas looking for clues, trying to solve crimes. Like a, the first one is having, is having you go after this a palm who stole a necklace and that takes you to a park and like you end up interrogating all these pokemon and people who are in the area and it's this very fleshed out interesting mystery now it's kind of obvious well it's sort of obvious uh, as to what happened well at first like you know who jumped the a palm right uh if you're really familiar with pokemon at all uh it's kind of obvious like um a murkrow came okay so basically basically what happened i sort of had the general idea of what happened uh, to start with, but then like it ended up surprising me at the end because like something else came up and like the necklace was not with the guy who jumped the a palm. So the Pokemon who jumped the a palm. So that's that had me going. Like it was simple, but it was fun to like figure this out. Like walk around the park, like get to know all these people, like get to know more about Pikachu and about see how all, the, all these Pokemon interact with each other. I think this is like the thing that this game does really, really well. By the way. I think this is the most fleshed out idea of how Pokemon behave. Uh, the most the, the most fleshed out uh, world building I think I've seen since like Pokemon Snap. Okay, like you really get the imp the impression that like Pokemon really live in this world and that they uh, coexist with humans and with each other and they all have like these relationship with uh, relationship relationships with each other and they all do like certain certain different things with each other. They all like uh, you know. They fight all the time. They, like, steal stuff from each other. Like, um, they sometimes get along. They, they sometimes do things for each other. Like, it, it's kind of interesting to see this, how this is fleshed out. And a lot of this, uh, this is the thing that I, I've raised about, like, uh, Pokemon Mystery, Super Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 2, by the way, is that a lot of this is established in the mainline games. Like, I knew when that APOM was jumped just what kind of Pokemon did it like, and, and why. But... Um, see, investigating it and like uncovering uh, because like the Pokedex entry is like uh, how these um, how this thing is set up, like how these Pokemon behave. That that was established in older games. Now I'm not familiar with every Pokemon like anymore <laughs> because there were just so fucking many, and I just don't really have the time to get super into it uh, right now. That that should change somewhat soon, but right now Pokemon like. It's interesting, like, to see how all this stuff that was established in all these other games is, like, brought back in, like, the weird, in, like, a really unique way. Like, to solve a mystery. Like, who would have thought that uh, Burmy, Burmy, and how its cloak, how, how it builds its cloak for itself would turn out to be, like, uh, an important part of, like, a mystery. But that's how they do it. That's, that's what makes it interesting and what makes it fun and what makes it, like, you know... What I think makes this, like, such a unique game, you know? It, it, it feels like a standard mystery game, 
but it's like really well made and it features Pokemon who like do stuff for you and just uh, are there and like are involved with the plot and it's just and Detective Pikachu. The other thing that I really, really, I really want to praise about this game specifically so far is the characters. Now the characters are really well designed. They all have like interesting personalities. Uh, they're all really likable. Like, I don't think it's quite on Ace Attorney's level or anything like that, but I certainly like them. Like, um, that assistant girl in particular kind of, uh, you know, she has an interesting, like, uh, design and stuff like that. Um, Detective Pikachu himself, like, Tim Goodman, like, I thought he was going to be this really generic guy, and he kind of is, but you know what? Like, he's likable enough. Like, uh, the girlfriend, well, I don't want to call her the girlfriend yet, but I think that's pretty obvious that's where this is going. The girlfriend is likable. Um, yeah, all the characters are, like, well animated. They all, like, behave, like, realistically. Uh, th there are some weird, um, you know, um, motion capture things that kind of throw me off, for example. Like, I get the impression that people move in ways they probably shouldn't. Like, w when you meet Emily, uh, Amelia in the cave, like I said, Emily, Amelia in the cave, where she's just like, a, where you're introducing each other, and she's just like, you start like pointing at each other, it's just like, I don't really see, I, I don't really, I, I can't really imagine a real person doing that, like, at all, and it, I, I don't know, it's things like that that kind of throw me off, but, uh, it, I don't know, like, I like the animation, I like the character models, like, the game is gorgeous, like, especially in cutscenes. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I think a lot of people were put off by is like the over uh, is the focus on cutscenes. Like, uh, is, is this going to be a Last of Us clone? And that was kind of like the issue I was going to have going into this, where like it would be primarily revolving around, revolving around the cutscenes and stuff like that. Um, that's kind of true. Like, it's very cinematic and driven and that sort of thing. Like, it's very focused on the mystery and like the plot and stuff like that. Very plot driven game, but like sort of like Ace Attorney. It, it still has, like, it's very much an adventure game. Like, it, it's not like The Last of Us where it pretends to be, like, this uh, uh, this stealth shooter thing. Um, it's very much a adventure-style game. Like, a very simplistic one, at least so far. Like, I don't, I haven't really had any trouble figuring out all these puzzles, but uh, it's fun, though. Like, I did notice that, like, the cave thing, the cave mission was a little bit more difficult than the park. So maybe they'll get harder and get more unique puzzles. Like I, they certainly put a lot of effort into the presentation and how you like and how you solve puzzles and how you piece things together and stuff like that. Like it's very organic. It makes sense. Like uh, you have to think about it. Like what you're doing is just like it is very fun, very unique. Uh, you know, I like the gameplay in this game. Uh, I was talking about the characters. Uh, Detective Pikachu himself is really likable and charming, and probably the main reason people are going to love this game. Because he's just so funny and says so many ridiculous things. And just, like, he's a really good detective, too. Like, fuck you, Professor Layton. Like, Detective Pikachu could outdo you. And I really do believe that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about this while I was playing. It's like, do I like this game more than Professor Layton? And at this point, even though I think the plot is kind of, uh, well, at least regarding what happened to Tim's dad. I think that much is pretty obvious at, at, at this point. I think they spell it out for you way too much, I think. Um, in, in spite of that, like, I find myself, you know, I don't really see this game having the issue that Professor Layton games have. Is that, like, the games go out of their way to pretend that, like, Professor Layton is, like, some super genius and that, like, uh, you know, just, uh, do, the thing I hate about Professor Layton games and, um, I've said this before, but the endings ruin everything. They do not put any thought into the endings of those games at all. And, like, nothing makes sense. It's just, like, yeah, even if you really are engaged with the characters and, like, the story and stuff like that, when it comes the comes down to it and we're, like, you get your answers and you get your idea of what happened here, you are going to be furious. Like, two... Uh, okay, so... I have no respect for the people who bitch about Mass Effect 3's ending, because Mass Effect was always terrible. But the Professor Layton games, like the two I've played, uh, Miracle Mass and the Ace Attorney crossover, the only reason I played the Ace Attorney crossover was because it was an Ace Attorney crossover. Both of those games 
had the worst end out of any game I've ever played. I have never been so angry. Look, not even games, like any piece of media ever. I have never been so angry at an ending. Such asshole endings, both of those. And if you think of Pikachu doesn't have that problem, and I imagine it doesn't, I think it's a problem with the latent writers in particular, uh, specifically. If you think, I don't think that's going to be a problem here. I think that like if this game you know, continues as it's going and continues interest, introducing new things and like new ideas, new characters, and new new like uh, elements, new gameplay elements in particular, uh, uh, new plot elements, like flesh out some of these characters more, uh, have a satisfying conclusion, then yes, I will be comfortable coming out and saying that, yes, I do like this game more than Professor Layton. This game, so far, is really solid. I'm really enjoying myself. I highly recommend it, recommend it, uh, recommend it, uh, recommend it to people who like games, like adventure-style games, or like Pokemon in general, or just, you know, just like 3DS games in general, because this game is solid. Like, this game... I'm really enjoying myself. Like, I think this game is probably the best Nintendo release so far this year. I'm really enjoying myself. I'm really anxious to see what the plot brings next. Uh, I want to see what happens with generic Pikachu. I want to see, like, what happens with Tim. I want to see him fuck Amelia. Like, I'm really invested in this already, okay? This game is great. And I hope this game is successful. And I hope... I, I will go see that movie when they make it, when they release it. Because Detective Pikachu has me hooked.